home and shelter update. I'm glad you came, uh, Mr. Brawley, because that way there'll be, you know, there'll be no question about any of this stuff. You, you, I know that you're going to be able to provide us with whatever answers or questions that I might ask. So thank you very much for being here. Um, I, I just went through the, uh, uh, the city council um, presentation. Uh, you know what? I, I actually wasn't there that day. You can't. I couldn't really ask many questions anyway because I probably would have already used my three minutes of fame. And how many questions can you come up with in three minutes? But I, I listened to this, and one of the reasons why I'm so interested in the homeless shelter is because I think it's an important issue here in Santa Clarita. You know, um, I've been following this for at least 20 years, and right from when Tim Davis. I used to run the Santa Clarita Community, Santa Clarita Community Development Corporation and run a homeless shelter. And some of the things that they, they posted as objectives 20 years ago are still objectives today. And, and, and I don't blame Bridge to Home for that. I blame the funders for that. I mean, and, and specifically in the area of Measure H. They sold us on Measure H of how this was going to end homelessness, how they were going to do all these wonderful things. We contribute millions of dollars a year, and we get back very little. And, and, and it showed in this presentation, and I think that that is a shame. Uh, if we would have been able to take that same amount of money, uh, capture it all, uh, we would have a permanent homeless shelter by now. Um, it, it, it's, it's just um, not uh, uh, a valuable resource. We are funding the rest of the world, and I'm not sure exactly if they're actually spending it. So um, th this report started with an, an L.A. County 18-month report card. And it said in the county, uh, 23,000 people have entered crisis centers or, or, uh, and interim housing, uh, funded in whole or in part by Measure H. Uh, 11,000 people secured permanent housing. 3,700 supportive and affordable housing have been approved across the county. 2,000 new jobs were filled with homeless in the homeless services system. In other words, they hired 2,000 people. Did we, in, in, in the city, in the city, if I applied those same criteria in the city, do we have numbers for the city of Santa Clarita? Are you asking a question? Yes. That, 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 I thought I had a question mark implication at the end of that question. Well, I'm not sure. Having peaceful answers to the issue. Okay. If Okay, uh, do, do we have numbers for the city? No, I, I want to help you. I want to help you. I want to see you succeed. And, and I don't think that they're giving you the resources you need to succeed. You can come on up. Come on up and, and, and come on up with me here. You know, you, it, it's okay. We don't bite. We don't bite. We're really nice people. Come on up. Look, Mr. Cole did it, and he's still alive. He's sitting there down there on the... Let me check your calls. It's really good. No, I want you to succeed. It's, it's my goal to see you succeed. Right, so I think you also, what I know is that I've been there for seven months. Okay. And in the last, um, in the last 18 months, we've gone from three case managers and navigators helping people. Yes. To almost 11. That's good. Now, I understand the, the other part that's com complex. So we, for instance, we applied for a funding resource. You remember the right. housing. Right, right. And that was Measure H funding. Right. And then halfway through the process. They canceled they, it. No, no. They, that was one part of it. But what they did was in the middle of it, they shifted funding of Measure H to go to something else and heap funding to come to that partic particular project. Okay. So the thing you understand about the system is that there is a lot of state money. There's federal money from okay. HUD. There's H money. And there's in the city county structure, there's shuffling of money to match grant sources to increase its level of sustainability. Okay. So if you're interested in Measure H and where Measure H fund is coming, is I would encourage you to work with um, with Jared, kind of get that information okay. down. Okay. Because I'm – we're trying to help homeless people. So if the money comes from HEAP, if it comes from Measure H, from it comes from whatever source it's coming from, we want to secure it to help people. Absolutely. That's where we're coming Absolutely. from. Absolutely. So Absolutely. when it comes to hiring 2,000 people, 
I know that the system had far fewer people helping homeless people in general. There's a lot of, lot of uh, new street outreach teams out doing work, and there's lots of people providing navigation. Okay. And one of the things I shared last time is we know how to help people go from homelessness to housing. When there's no housing, well, there's that's, an that's, issue we're, in the We're going to talk so, about that later. So, <laughs> so you're going to talk about all that. I understand. So, again, so we, I talked about that okay. the last time that yeah. I was here. So none of that has changed. Okay. It's the same. Okay, good. Oh, don't go away. Don't oh, go away. Okay. Yeah, stick around, you know. Okay. It, it, it's okay. Uh, I'm with you. Anyway, the, uh, the city uh, has talked about uh, in 2017, you know that, that although um, my organization, my other organization, is part of the Homeless Ad Hoc Committee, I, I still think that that thing should be open to the public. There is no ad hoc. Committee. Well, the task force now. There, there's a, a task force with, I think, 30 community. I, yeah, they're they're in here. That was adopted not in 17 but in 18. Right. And just had their meeting today. And so again, bridge to home. We're we're a nonprofit. We go. We're participating. Okay. We're doing whatever to do. But and um, well, you're participating with my other organization too. I know. I love having <laughs> you there. So okay. So that, that's that, that's good. Okay. So. Um, uh, they, and I remember they finalized this uh, community plan. I have a copy of it. We'll probably go through it again. Um, I, I didn't really see it. You uh, really want to put people to sleep, don't you? No, no. I, I, if I put people to sleep with that, if I put people to sleep with that community plan, that means that community plan isn't very good. You, get the community, if I talk about that community plan and everybody says, "Oh God, that's wonderful," right? So, then, so then I that's really. You want to know what we're doing? Well, yeah. I just want to read what was on the city. Well, no, 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 no. I, I, I know about 17 and 18, okay. In 19, um, uh, I remember the $375,000, right? Did you? And that was for? The $375,000 in measure funding. That's for our case management team. Okay. And, and so you've hired case management uh -huh. people. That's great. And then uh, there's a task force, 30-member right. task force. I, I still think that should be an open, brown action issue that people can come in and, and hear it in action. It's a city uh, task force. Okay. Well, okay. And, but if the city what form... What happened to the money from Tesoro? Are they giving it to Bridge to Home? Actually, it's in here. Well, let them speak, man. Well, they... We, I said, Alan, no. I said, Al, I'm here to listen. And here I am standing up in front. Well, you're standing up in front because... <laughs> What, why? Um, what, why not? I mean, I'm happy to. You're happy to, right? It's, it's, it, we're, we're promoting your your uh, your organization. Even he's smiling, and that's unusual. <laughs> I smile all the time. Okay. So yes. Yeah, so the leaders of that. So so. Um, There's the thirty. The thirty mayor, groups. The mayor and, and and council members Smith are the city council members who right. are assigned to that. So um, if you wanted to give more feedback, you could give it to them. It's their well, it's their task force. Their actually, you see right here in the middle. Where it says uh, Samuel Dixon, right? I'm on the board of Samuel Dixon, okay. so I get I get reports back from Philip, and I guess I can find out when the meetings are if I want to, right? Because right. uh, we're invited. But I I think that when you do things for the community, you need to have community involvement. People want to know what's going on. Don't you guys want to know what's going on? You're, you're not shaking your head either. Yes, don't you know? <laughs> uh, Well, uh, most of these, most of these organizations, most of these organizations do different things. Okay, so, so, so just, there's there's your um, your leaders. So here, let me just let okay. Me up. So, so the concept that there's a committee that's making committee-based decisions. What's really happening is there are folks who are focused on health care and education and homeless people in those realms. Okay. For folks who are with shelter care and you know, direct service. There's the need to focus on preventing people from going into homelessness. Okay. And so there are agencies that do all of that work. So they're, they're in committees, and there's a lot of reporting out in these committees about how very specific action steps are to be followed. Now, the committee's only met three or four times, so a lot of the work that they've been doing so far is pulling how's the committee going to work. But what we're supposed to end up with is a dashboard of very specific goals with timelines for those things being met. And the committee is doing that work and being able to report out. So it's bringing together as many people and stakeholders so that really no one who's doing and providing services is being left out of okay. the process. Right. So that's the goal behind it. Okay. So are, are these the committees? Yes. 
So you see topic area one, two, and three. So you've got preventing homelessness, increasing income for folks, subsidized housing, um, affordable housing, and then the local coordination of how that all comes together. So maybe in the near future you could have a sixth one that talks about health care? Um, well, certainly health care um, comes into the preventing homelessness component, and it also comes into the um, – the increasing affordable housing because we need the healthcare community to be focused on recuperative care and keeping people from coming up coming off the streets when they're actually leaving the hospital. Okay. Well, we want to uh, uh, work on uh, healthcare and um, provide healthcare to you uh, directly at the shelter. We're going to do that. We already have in the plan. There's a space for your for you for um, Samuel Dixon to providing healthcare for homeless people in the shelter. Okay. All right, so this was the update. Received the funding uh, to tie in water and sewer to their future development. But I understand that's still not done. No, we just completed the survey of the entire property, and so the funding is there. And so with the $50,000 that we just got to hire a program manager, okay. the program manager is going to put that into place, and we're hoping within the next six to seven months that will be complete. Water will be there, survey, the, the sewer will be in. Okay, so we should... Um, have ourselves hooked up to uh, to sewer and water six to seven months yes, from now? Oh, yes. That seems like a long time. Why? Why? It's not easy to do. You just can't go out and start digging a trench. Uh, we we're going to have to dig up that street. Maybe in the good old days, but not now. <laughs> okay, and uh, the uh, one million in measure age funding that you were awarded? Well, that includes $680,000 for a grant to build a family shelter. So we've right. got enough money to build that family shelter. And then there was uh, Measure H funding that was put in for case management and navigation. So is the plan to to have a uh, uh, a, a another um, modular for that area? Remember I showed it the last time with the big picture. Oh, that's right. Changed. You did. Right. Yes, you did. You did. Um, I'm sorry. It's just, you know. I, I've got to go to, where is that lady? I, I would go to the the the, uh, the um, a class on um, memory if I would remember to go. That's right. <laughs> so okay. the family shelter will be a permanent fixture, a permanent building. And it's it's good to see this $1.6 million as part of the Phase 2 development in Tesoro. Correct. So, so instead of them building a shelter, they're going to provide you with some funding. Yeah, so, well, the $1.6 million was put aside, and when a certain amount of grading is done, then that, if, with, on the Tesoro project, that money is supposed to be released. So there is a criteria that says that that $1.6 million must be spent in first priority in the city of Santa Clarita and first priority for interim housing for the homeless. So it seems to be earmarked for us. Um, uh, but we're going to have to go through a process to get it. Okay, so you, you still need to to um, to, that to work right? that work that issue out. Is that about right? That's about right. Is that about right? Okay. You're smiling again. Huh? You're smiling again. I like it. All right. Uh, receive gap funding to continue operations through July. So is the shelter actually going to close in July and then reopen later in the winter? No, we've applied for a million dollars in annual funding for 24 hours, 7, 365 day a week shelter services programming. Okay. Um, that will be released. The results of whether we get that money or not will be released in May. Okay. So we received $200,000 to keep the shelter open uh, between when it would have closed in April, on April 1st through July. So the amazing news for this community is every single year for 22 years, 60 people who are working hard to go from homelessness to housing well, had to go no back yeah. to the well, street. No, well, started at 24. well, yeah, but you, know, you see how much better he does at this presentation than no, I do? He's only been here seven months. Give him <laughs> doing a great job. Okay. Um, now, this is the homeless coordinator um, to assist the administration of the task force. Well, once again, I, I, I'm not the best person to comment on that component. Um, the city received a $300,000 grant um, using Measure H funding, which is overall coordination for Measure H funding. Uh, $300,000, uh, I'm sorry, um, there's $350,000 grant. 300000 of it is going to um, uh, provide funding to, for Family Promise to build their center. And $50,000 was put aside for them to hire staff 
to be the person who, remember I talked about creating a dashboard? Yes. And coordinating the work of those 30 yes. agencies that are working together. Okay. And writing grants to okay. additionally add grants. That person has those three responsibilities okay. is what I understand. All right. And so and this project manager is a different person that's going to work for you? That's for the construction project. Yes. That's for the, that's for the capital project for our building on the Drayton Street property. Working for you? Working for you. Correct. Yes. Good. Right. So we've received a grant to hire that person. Good. Okay. Um, oh, and this is the responsibility of the homeless coordinator. Uh, let's see. I think that's okay. Um, I think that's exactly what you just told me. And um, yeah, you see, one of the reasons why uh, I, I keep harping on this is because I keep seeing money coming from measuration thousands while we contribute millions. Well, we've, we've gotten, when you add everything up, probably $2 million. Yes. So far, at Measure H funding. Yes. We'll get more. Yes. Um, but the key is, um, no, to you. the key is we do not want to have what is happening just over the hill where you have 10 cities everywhere uh, out here. Um, the shelter's been in, in place for over 20 years. I think all of us have seen an uptick in homelessness probably up to the Great Recession in 07 going forward. This community, more than any other community I've ever seen, has been tremendously supportive of taking care of those who are in need. At least two-thirds, if not more, of the people that we meet and deal with, the last known address for Santa Cruz. One of the arguments were, you build it, they will come. That's not the case. I see the new halls there. Their foundation has been one of the great supporters of ours over the years, um, as have a lot of the faith community. Every one of our meals, hot meals at night, sack lunches at breakfast are all donated. We spend no money on the meals. We're going to have to ramp that up as we go year-round 24-7. Um, but our goal is to end homelessness here in Santa Cruz and transition people into permanent housing. That's our goal. Um, arguing about whether you're getting as much from Measure H or not, go argue that with whoever you want to argue. That's what we're working on. That's what the city of Santa Cruz is working on. It's been very supportive. That's what the county supervisor, Catherine Barger, is working on. We're working to solve the problem and work with our very active community to do that. Uh, and the story I like to tell, I may have said it on, at the city council on Tuesday night, but may not have. I can't remember because I said You didn't take the class either. I forget <laughs> things too. When I first got involved, it was when we were going to move from the Drayton, um, or I think we had just moved from Golden Valley when we were going to build a sheriff station. And I asked, why are we moving? Well, we're moving because there was this grand deal that every three years it would move. It would go from the county to the city and then back to the county. I said, why? Because the perception was that a homeless shelter was a burden. So you got to, Diane Travis not cheap. She was there at the time. It's not a burden, it's a solution. So when we came up to our three years, the 2017 task force we were talking about, our board said, this makes no sense. We went to the city. The city's come a long way, by the way. And they said, well, no, no, that was the deal. I said, well, where is it going? It's going to the parking lot of the Pitchers on a Ranch, away from any services, away from any transit, um, closer to residential communities. It made no sense. So. We got together a task force because we were told that's what we had to do. You were on it. Uh, unanimously, with the exception of one person, uh, recommended that we stay where we are. And the deal was, well, find a, a permanent location. We did another group on that. And after we did all that and found what was available, the consensus was where we are now. The city's worked with us, gave us the existing land where we're on right now. We're, uh, we're releasing from the city, I think, for a dollar a year bought a parcel next to us so we could expand and do this uh, uh, services, homeless services center. So we've come a long way and that's where our focus is. And look forward to continuing to work with community groups to go on that fork. And if you want to argue about Measure H, go do that. But in our opinion, so we have a lot of support for Measure H. 
and it's doing a lot of good in this community, and we're going to take advantage of that. So, Al, I know that how, I appreciate how you're able to really break the issues down. And the thing about, as you know, as you know better than almost anyone about homeless services, this is, there are nuances after nuance after nuance of course. as to it. So, if we get a, if you know, and if I, if you give me fifty dollars and say, Mike, I want this to go to build a capital project, I can't take that money and spend it on operations. There, are very, and the same thing goes for Measure H. It was designed for this, this, and this. So if they can use Measure H in the county and spend it over there on that, and it frees up a million dollars of heap funding to come to Santa Clarita, we still got a million yeah, dollars I, that we yeah. would not have had access to before. But that's a nuance that you know people aren't particularly excited to be learning about. But it's important um, to understand, and I'm still learning. There's a lot of movement and complexity around it. Well, I'll go back and get the exact numbers. But as I remember... We are contributing at a Santa Rita about $3 million a year in Measure H funding. And the amount of money that could come back to us was being ratioed by the homeless count at a maximum. So there's, there's, it, it's not always, um, it, it, if, and, and at the time, our city council didn't want to deal with it at all. We asked our city council to get involved with it right back then. So you're right, they have come a long ways because now they're actually doing some business in here. The city, for the last three or four years, has been tremendously supportive of our efforts. Good. Uh, and along with our supervisor, Barker. But one of the things that's come out recently, so you, you talk about the count. We agree the count is difficult because the count is a one-size-fits-all. Um, it doesn't necessarily work for, for our community, and we're working on that issue. But... Uh, College of the Canyons. They believe they have 600 students who are technically homeless. Uh, maybe couch surfers. They've opened up where, where, where kids uh, who register can use the, the showers on campus to clean up and change, get clean clothes. At their big fundraiser um, <coughs> recently, they did a, a, a program to get funding for backpacks for all of these students. And they raised enough to do it, 600 backpacks. That's a face of homelessness that most people don't know or understand. Um, there was some controversy last year about what the count was in Santa Creta. It was kind of like it had gone down. It was only a little over 100. But we saw more than that individuals in the shelter because it's not the same 60 every night. And our case management list is well over 300. So that's all part of the issue we're working on. Um, and uh, and right now, there's a group of um, five graduate students from UCLA who are it, yeah, it was in here. Yes, who, who are focused on. You couldn't got anybody from USC. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> from where? My <laughs> alma mater. What? Well, you know, don't talk about the skin. Well, I was about to say, you know, what, don't what, talk about the skin. These students' parents. No, but what what what, what college was that? <laughs> um, what, so, come on, what college was that? Go ahead. Keep talking. He's not going to tell us what college you went to? I've lost, I've lost track of what I was going to say. You're talking about the five graduate students from UCLA? Oh, right. So yeah. they came and they took a look. It was the last count. I'm new, so I got to, I've got participated in at least eight different counts. And so we were able to be really critical and take a new look at how we can improve the account um, and maybe um, look at a different method. Instead of having relying on a count that happens every day is to create more of a registry so we know how many people we have every year and whether that number is coming up and down and involving the healthcare center and the schools around a common sure. um, and, and really kind of computerizing that. So we're doing the best that we can to improve that. Okay. Well, okay. I, well, I, I want to thank you guys because you've been in good sports up here even though you won't tell me what college you graduated from. USC. I already New York that. State? You, were you have a memory problem. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Huh? Look, I, I think it's important, but the, the only thing I want to comment on is that when they talk about the way that the shelter was located, was a, a, a committee that was established by Paul Novak, and I thought it was brilliant. Uh, before that time, everybody tried to say, where can we put a homeless shelter? And it, it just didn't work. Paul Novak came out here. And the first five meetings that we had, all he did was say, I want you to tell me where you can't put a homeless shelter. So uh, we listed all the places you can't put a homeless shelter. Then he sent four guys out and said, find me places that don't violate that list. And they came back with four. 
They went to uh, Santa Cruz City Council, and Santa Cruz City Council reduced it to three. Okay, and um, and that's uh, when it because it was indeed uh, causing a problem in the Via Princesa parking lot because of the way it was operating at the time. And um, uh, a little bit later, about oh, I would say uh, maybe uh, two years later, the state said the city, a municipality, a municipality must must provide zoning for a shelter or if they do not provide specific zoning for homeless shelter you can you can uh, uh, a shelter can can ask to be permitted in any location by right so Lori Ender was the mayor at the time and she got the group back together one other time that we did and and uh, and showed us a homeless a permanent homeless shelter overlay zone that the city implemented as an area where uh, shelters could be around the city. Drayton is in that, is in that uh, part as well.